Welcome to the SAP Business One Service Layer Development Optimization e-learning session. My name is Trinidad Martinez and I'm part of the SAP Business One Solution Architect team. In this session, you will learn some tips and strategies to optimize your development as well as how to use the query options. Please review the SAP Business One Service Layer introduction and API samples e-learning sessions to make sure you have the basic level of knowledge required for this session. In the first part of the session, we will talk about different service layer capabilities and options that will allow you to get better performances on your developments. In a second part, we will review the available service layer query options and how to use them. They will also help you to improve performances on your queries. Let's have a look to some development optimization tips. Let's start with the add operation return no content option. The response body from a basic add operation contains the full set of properties of the relevant entity that was added. Depending on the number of properties of the specific entity plus the network latency, performances can be impacted. There is an option in the service layer to return an empty body in the response. To set this option in the add operation request header, you specify the preferred key with the value return no content. With this option, only the key details of the newly added entity will return it as a path in the response header with a key called location. An example is shown here. We have an HTTP POST operation that uses the return no content option. The preference applied confirms that the server accepts the option, and the location indicates the newly created items entity has the key I011. Pagination is a technique commonly used to send all records divided in small chunks instead of in a single response. Small chunks allow the end user to start looking at part of the data while the rest of the data is still loading. This is an advantage for big list of items since the screens are often not able to show all records at once. Pagination is activated by default in service layer. The default page size is 20, which means that asking for a list of records will only return 20 records maximum. Service layer pagination can be customized either via the service layer configuration file for all requests or via the OData annotation odata.max page size for a specific request. Note that the service layer configuration file is called b1s.conf and is located in the installation conf folder. It is not recommended to change the default pagination size unless it is really required for your application. If the list of entities requested contains more records than the pagination size, on the query response, the odata.next link provides the link to the next chunk of data. This is shown in the example where 20 orders will be returned, and the link to retrieve the next 20 will be indicated in the odata.next link. We already talked about batch operations in the SAP Business One Service Layer API samples e-learning session. At this point, I just want to emphasize the fact that using batch operations can improve performance as it reduces the number of request responses by sending several operations in a single request that will respond with a single response for all operations. A very basic example is the necessity to create 10 business partners. With the batch operation, only one request contains all the required information to create the 10 business partners. And a single response message will contain all the results from the execution of the 10 add business partners operation by service layer. And the single response message will contain all the results from the execution of the 10 add business partners operation by service layer. Navigation and associations were explained in detail in the SAP Business One Service Layer API samples e-learning session. Here, I just want to emphasize again its relevance for performance optimization in your development. In the example, Orders and Business Partners Association allows to retrieve directly business partners entity in only one request, against two queries that will be required if the two entities were not associated. 
User-defined schemas are another optimization you can use. Because SAP Business One entities generally contain more properties than required in your development, you can define your own schemas with trimmed data structures. This reduces the number of properties for the entities you work with. In our example, the MyMarketingDocuments.schema file will restrict the properties as follows. For type document, including all marketing document entities, only the doc entry, doc num, and document line properties. And for the type document line, only the line num, item code, and quantity properties. The newly created schema file has to be copied in the service layer conf folder. You can point to your specific schema file from the configuration file of the service layer or specify it in the header of each one of your requests. To get more details on the user-defined schemas feature, please check the SAP Business One service layer user manual. Let's now talk about SAP Business One service layer supported query options. Query options within a request URL can control how a particular request is processed by service layer. A service layer is based on OData protocol. OData queries can be applied to both collections of entities and single entities via the HTTP method GET. Please note SAP HANA has excellent performance on aggregation and grouping operations. Being able to expose this via service layer provides a convenient way for customers to better leverage this advantage. We will look at the service layer supported query options in the upcoming slides. For the moment, I just want to emphasize that service layer performance can be improved by using query options. The dollar select option restricts the service to return only the entity properties that are explicitly requested. With this option, the size of the response body can then be reduced and for a small network bandwidth, the performances can be improved. The example provided shows a GET request to retrieve a specific business partner entity with car code C1 and restricts the properties to be returned to only car code and car name by using the dollar $SELECT query option. Another supported query option is the dollar order by. With this query option, we can specify in our query request the order in which the entities have to be returned. The first example will return the business partner's entities ordered by the car code property descending order. The second example will also return the business partner's entities ordered by car code descending order, but because combined with the select query option, only the properties car code and car name will be part of the response body. Dollar top, dollar skip, and dollar count are typically used to work with pagination, but other cases can require their individual usage. Dollar top returns the first n non-negative integer records. Dollar skip excludes the first n entities. Dollar count returns the count of an existing collection. In the first example, the response will only include the business partner's entities at position 5 and 6 in the results collections, as we ask for only two entities using top 2, and we skip the first four entities using skip 4. In the second example, the response will simply return the number of business partner's entities available in our company database. Dollar inline count allows clients to request the number of matching resources in line with the resources in the response. This is most useful when a service implements server-side paging, as it allows clients to retrieve the number of matching resources even if the service decides to respond with only a single page of matching resources. In the first example, we get the all data count value in the response because we specified all pages. In the second example, the count is not returned as none is specified. Please note that you must specify the dollar inline count query option with a value of all pages or none. Otherwise, the service returns 
an HTTP status code of 400 bad requests. For example, if we just want to search for the business partner's entities where car code starts with C underscore and group code is equal to G1, we just apply the dollar filter query option with the starts with filter expression and the ek equal operator. In the second example, we want to get all the orders where the total is greater than 3000. So we apply the filter with the greater than operator. In SAP HANA, due to the default Unicode collection, any query is case sensitive. The service layer allows the activation of case insensitive filters by setting the parameter B1S case insensitive true in the request header. As an example, if you need to retrieve all the business partners with car code starting either with lowercase c or uppercase c, you can use the B1S case insensitive option to filter the collection of business partners with case insensitive. Note that if you use the cross origin resource sharing mechanism, the B1S case insensitive parameter needs to be appended in the Cora lower headers of the b1s.conf configuration file of service layer. As an important note, please pay attention that query performances for case insensitive requests can be slower. The aggregate option summarizes the results of a particular property based on the aggregation function specified. The service layer aggregation supported functions at the time of this recording are sum, average, minimum, maximum, count, and distinct count. To trigger the aggregation behavior, you use the query option $apply together with the aggregate keyword. Please note that you must define an alias with the as keyword to retrieve the result of each aggregate value. The example shown in this slide retrieves the order entity with the highest doc total for a specific business partner. To get more details about aggregate, please check the service layer user manual as well as the block link provided in this slide. Group by gathers together all the rows that contain the same data in the specified properties. Group by is often combined with aggregate to perform aggregate functions on specific columns. To trigger group by behavior, we use the query option $apply and the group by keyword. The provided example retrieves a list of orders grouped by car code, what means same business partner, and aggregates the doc total by business partner. The service layer provides predefined associations between different entities in the metadata document. But if you require some entity associations that are not defined by the service layer, you can use dollar cross join to simulate associations. The dollar cross join option allows requests to entity sets that have no predefined associations according to the supplied filter conditions. In the provided example, Cross-join is used to generate a result response containing two entities, business partners and activities. The filter will define the relationship between the different entities. In this case, the car code is a common property. Business partners car code equal to activities car code. The group by will set the properties that will define the grouping and be returned for each result value. They are car code, card name, and current account balance from the business partner's entity. The aggregate will set the properties that will be aggregated to be part of each result value. In our case, the number of distinct activities on the activity entity for the same car code as the group by fixes. Please note that the cross join must be used in conjunction with query filter options. Without query options, cross join will not work as it has not practical usage to get large volumes of data under complex associations.
In this session, we cover tips and strategies to optimize your development, like ad operation with return no content option, pagination, batch operations, navigations and associations, and user-defined schemas. We also covered query options you can add to the get query, like select, order by, and so on. Don't hesitate to come back to this session in the future to review the available options. Please check as well the user manual for latest updates. We have now completed the SAP Business One Service Layer Development Optimization e-learning session. I hope you have enjoyed the content provided. Thank you for your participation and see you soon.